Hello, my name is Mike Johnson. I'm taking you on an inside and outside video tour of this 2018 Jayco Super Short Class A motorhome. Now this is a really nice one. It's very short on the length. Look at that, look how short it is. But it's a Class A, so it's got so much room inside. Lots of cargo capacity, full featured with leveling jacks, generator, air conditioning, towing package, backup camera, side view cameras, a factory Garmin navigation and backup and side camera system. So this has a high-end Garmin stereo, state-of-the-art stuff. It's a Jayco, which is one of the best names They've been a family owned business for many, many years. Well run, never went bankrupt during the recessions. And actually uh, one of the big guys just bought Jayco from the family so the family can retire. But they're still gonna continue operating as Jayco. This is a really nice one, high quality coach. Jayco Alante. This is a 26X floor plan. So as I stand here, I'm gonna show you a graphic of the floor plan from the side view. So you can visualize the floor plan and also the specifications. So you can see how long it is, how tall it is, how wide it is. Here's your specification sheet. This is a really nice one. It's got the outside giant TV and stereo system. Right now we're in the middle of a cul-de-sac scanning for channels. So far it's found 80 digital channels, but it's still looking. We're in the middle of the parking lot and it's picked up 80 digital channels already. Or a cul-de-sac actually. So because it's a short one, you can drive it very easily with a car driver's license. You can maneuver it in parking lots and you can get campground spaces for shorter motorhomes. This is shorter than a lot of the C-Class. Now I'm gonna show you what a C-Class is. C-Class has the Ford van front end. This is a 26 footer. So it's almost as short as the little Mercedes Benz motorhomes. Yet it's a bigger, more spacious Class A. It's done searching for channels. It found the channels in the middle of a cul-de-sac. We're going to turn off the volume here. So when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can watch TV at the campground if you want to relax in your, and have a few drinks. You can have your big old TV going. That's a nice big outside TV. I think it's a 40 inch, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a 40 inch exterior TV, which is one of the biggest I've ever seen in a motorhome on the outside TV. And it's got a stereo mounted in that compartment as well. This one is white fiberglass, so it reflects heat. So if you're gonna take it to the desert, it's not gonna get as hot because it's a white reflective color. It's pretty glossy and clean exterior condition. This one even has a sun resistant slide topper awning. So over the slide out is a topper awning. Those are really important because they keep off rain, dirt, debris, leaves. You know, when you go to a nice campground and you park under a tree, then the birds and the squirrels are throwing acorns on top of your RV. If you don't have the slide topper awning, that means you're gonna have to get up there with a broom. A lot of the Jayco's do not have the topper awnings and they're really important that you have those because if there's a bunch of acorns sitting on top of this slide out for example and then you slide it in and they slide in still on top of the slide out then you start driving all that stuff is going to land on the driver when you hit the brake. Slide topper awnings is a critical must have component of an RV. And these actually have the heat and sun shields on them, which is very rare. 
You've got your hookup station right here. Black and gray tanks. They are kind of exposed. They do have heating elements on it, but this is not a, a coach that you would take into freezing winter conditions. This is not a good for when you're gonna go camping at 17 degrees below zero. For that, you need something different. But if you're gonna go camp in the summertime or all year long, like along the beach, here in California, there's a lot of really nice campsites along the coast. Here's a picture of one in Malibu. You can rent a campsite in Malibu overlooking the ocean. But when you do these beachfront campsites, the length is critical. If it's too long, it's a lot harder to reserve a space. So having a 26 footer, you say, how long is your RV? Oh, it's a 26 foot uh, motorhome. Oh, okay. We have 30 26 foot spaces. And we have two 40-foot spaces. So the 40-foot spaces are sold out for the next year, but we have three 26-foot spaces available. Which one you want? So that's the advantage of a short floor plan. Now, if you want to figure out what campgrounds you might want to stay at, before we go in and look at more of the RV, I highly recommend that you have the Good Sam app, which is free. You can search for campgrounds. Here's a screenshot. The Good Sam app will let you look for campgrounds. And then when you find one you might want, you can click on it after you've searched the map where you're gonna be or where you are now. Pick a campground, see what ratings and reviews it has. It's pretty cool. This one has a lot of big cargo storage. Before we go inside, an advantage of an A-Class are these big cargo compartments that's your hookups right there you've got really cool easy to use water valves with a map that shows you which way they should be pointed mini condition hoses even a paper towel holder in here you got lots of hoses in this rig these are huge cargo compartment doors your generator's running nice and smooth now we had to put a new carburetor on this generator because a lot of people don't use their generators enough and then it won't run or won't start. This one was almost not used at all. It has extremely low time on the generator. And so the car carburetor gummed up from lack of use. So we put a brand new carburetor on it. Cargo compartments. More cargo compartments. These are tall. A lot of the C-Class motorhomes, the compartment is only one third as tall as this. Here is a box for a 24 inch television. So this is a big old box, just so you can visualize the size. These have LED lights inside the cargo compartments. A lot of RVs don't give you lights in the compartments, but this one has them. This RV has an inverter on it. We'll talk about that later. It has new batteries in it. Auto leveling. A real propane tank. Some of the RVs are cheap. They give you those portable barbecue propane tanks, but you've got a real big propane tank and you've got a quick connect. You can hook up an outside barbecue. You've also got electrical outlets. So you can hook up a George Foreman grill mega size cargo storage now they're not big enough to put a bicycle in but you have trailer hitch on the back you can tow your bicycles mounted on the back on a trailer hitch mount if you're into bicycling but they will not fit most rvs don't have bicycle size compartments very few that's pretty rare but you could bring it inside if you needed to because it's a nice big a class you have a lot of room inside we'll show you the trailer hitch and show you underneath we're gonna go up on the roof. So, we're about to go inside the 26X. Before we do, we have the stereo running outside. It works. Sounds really good. You got these nice speakers. And these are weatherproof speakers, but they're inside, outside. They're inside away from the sun. 
a lot of the motorhomes are putting the speakers on the outside and they are falling apart after four years because the sun tears them up but you won't necessarily have that problem because these are still indoors with your big 40 inch exterior tv most rvs only have a 32 inch you got your led patio light so when you're plugged in here at the campground you can really enjoy yourself as we go inside it's got this uh wood style flooring sweep it clean there's no carpet jaco is known for minimal carpet and actually there's no carpet to worry about if you have pets or little dogs or any animals in here uh carpet can be your enemy if they have any accidents you've got the giant 40 inch inside tv as well and you've got a 24 inch brand new tv in the bedroom and because this has an inverter all these tvs will run without being plugged in and without using the generator so as we take a look through here you've got rear walk around queen bed remember this is a short floor plan and yet you can walk all the way around this queen bed to the other side which is pretty unusual and then for a short floor plan that's pretty unusual you have your power control center here you have your fan control your slide out control your mid wall light switches if you have any mobility issues where it's hard for you to reach for the ceiling these wall switches will help you out because they're all within reach mid wall height not reaching up to the ceiling over the front seats you have an electric drop down bed which is a really easy to use it just has like a seat belt to hold it up you just unclip the seat belt and then you can turn make sure the key is on and then you lower it down the seats have to be in the correct position to lower it down they are not right now you have your center table here installed which is removable it just twists and it comes loose the center table and then you can uh, enjoy yourself these swivel around for extra additional seating in addition to your sofa and your dinette remember this is a short floor plan this is a lot of room in here this is like van life short floor plan it's a just about the same length as a mercedes sprinter but with two slide outs and being a class a oh you have so much room and you have a full bathroom in here let's go check it out with a real door you open up the bathroom and you have your shower with a glass enclosure in here your shower massage spray head you have a nice giant window in the restroom overhead roof vent fan with a weatherproof vent over the top we installed a brand new weatherproof vent you've got a nice big sink a second sink it's a lot of luxury in here my wife likes to watch this uh, YouTubers Kara and Nate and they're trying to make do in a little van a little Mercedes van going all over the country during the COVID and it's pretty hard with a little van but not with something like this it's a big fancy RV here where you got room to move around we're gonna lower the bed in a second we got to put the seats into position I'm going to put these seats in a forward facing position so that they will not interfere and then I'm going to hit the switch and you want to make sure you're not going to interfere with anything and lower it down put the armrest down okay that's it it's down to the top of the seats now your electric bed is in the down position 
the roof access I'm sorry the bed access ladder is up on top it even has a little safety thing if you've got smaller kids you can put this little fence up to prevent them from falling down so they included that there's two of these little fences and that's a pretty good design it's very quiet like I said some of these RVs with electric beds have a complicated like you have to put a pin in and they get stuck and they don't line up this is just like a seat belt for your car you plug it in and that protects this uh, bed from dropping when you're driving it's a pretty nice setup you want to put it up just hit the button and it goes up oh I was playing with the light switch see a little seat belt buckle there so if you're about to head out you just clip in the seat belt and make sure that this bed will be prevented from dropping down on you so and you can also turn the key off so it won't have electrical power there is additional storage in here you have these full window shades we're close to another RV in front so lighted controls here power mirrors lowering the power window shade with the controls here it drops down and you have total privacy in here so we're going on a little test drive of the 26x Jayco Alante this one has 15,761 miles on the odometer and we're driving we have our side view cameras we have our Garmin navigation system so we're going for a test drive of this Jayco Alante 26 footer a lot of power it's got that big v10 engine and it's not that big and heavy let's go in this parking lot over here practice pulling it into a parking space we have navigation side view camera that's right now it actually has built-in Garmin navigation So we're going to maneuver into the single parking space, this 26 footer. There's one where it will fit. Using my backup camera to see where I'm going. And I'm using my towing mirrors to see where I'm going. I have two big towing mirrors. And we're almost completely fitting in a parking space. Now I will qualify that we're backed with an overhang in the back. Sorry, you don't want to do it over big tall bushes, but you can back in over the bushes. And it's short enough to fit in one single parking space. Very few motorhomes, class A's, are capable of doing that. Look at that though. It's overhanging a little bit. You wouldn't want to do it if there's a pole behind you. But this, this parking spot, I know I fit in one single parking spot. So with your in-dash Garmin navigation, you can navigate you to your destination. You've got your cruise control. Again, your backup camera. Side view camera. 
pretty easy to drive because it's a 2018 it has the newer six-speed automatic transmission and on the end of the gear selector is tow haul mode when you push that little button the little amber light comes on on the dash it says tow haul you need to know about that so i'm going to explain it on this video it's really good to use that when you're going up or down in the hills because when you're in the mountains it'll help by using your transmission as a grade brake which means when you're coming down a mountain grade the transmission downshifts to help you slow down in if you're one of those people that rides your brake pedal down a mountain you're doing it wrong and this tow haul mode is for going down mountains because as soon as you tap the brake the engine will downshift and the engine will help you slow down the mountain so hypothetically you could almost not use the brakes at all to come down a mountain pass if you're doing it correctly very very little brake pressure required and infrequent not very often when you're coming down a mountain with tow haul mode even if you're not towing or hauling you're still in a big motorhome and it's heavy it's not that heavy this one has like a 16,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating so as far as motorhomes go this is a lighter weight unit which helps it to get much better fuel economy because you're not hauling as much metal and fiberglass around with you on your trips and it accelerates quicker it goes up mountains without lagging you can cruise up a mountain pass at 75 miles an hour going up and you can handle it coming down these do have an electronic speed limitation of 75 miles an hour they cannot go faster because they're electronically limited for safety that's done by ford and then right now while i'm driving i am using the generator to run the rear air conditioner it's only 75 degrees outside but we just put a carburetor on it so i'm giving it some exercise and then this is a pretty rough road it's a very quiet driving smooth riding with a j-ride suspension upgrade but uh it's not bad anyone can drive this it's not too long versus class a motorhomes can get up to 40 feet long just on gas rigs 38 39 feet and you don't necessarily need that much space you can still sleep so many people in here so nice little test drive here and parking demonstration so i hope you enjoyed your little test drive there i'm gonna go around the inside so this is a jackknife sofa so you just remove the little armrest and it flips into a, a bed one or two small people could sleep there this is a dream dinette with a table vader these are great so you have a little release handle under here you release it and it goes down like an elevator so you literally just push it down you'd move the cushions out of the way it fits into its little notch and then you put the cushions to make it across into a bed piece of cake and just lock the handle in place it's a table again that simple from bed to table in seconds you have a full kitchen over here three burner cooktop stainless steel sink your tv you can watch tv while you're making dinner a large capacity microwave oven it's not the little tiny microwave this is the like a two cubic foot large format microwave oven rv absorption refrigerator this is a high efficiency refrigerator so it's ideal if you want to dry camp uh, with primitive campsites with no hookups me and my family we like to go to full hookup campgrounds what's the difference a full hookup campground has water sewer and electrical hookups it's just like being in an apartment when you're in a full hookup campground you're not having to use the onboard water capability of the rv or the generator 
or any of that. You're just plugged in you, with your water, sewer, and electrical at a full hookup campground. Just like if you were staying in a motel room, only it's your place. It's not somebody else's bed you're sleeping on. Um, but if you go primitive camping, that's a campground like in the middle of the desert or a parking lot where there's no water, sewer, or electrical hookups. You do have onboard generator. You have an onboard water tank and your onboard propane with your LED lighting and everything. So you could stay in here just almost the same, except you have to limit how long you take your showers if you're doing primitive camping or you'll run out of water. The refrigerator is super clean. This is a 2018. Uh, it's a very late model motorhome. Very little use at all on this. It's almost like they bought it, took it for a few trips and said, oh, that's it. We got our RV fix. Full extension drawers with super dirty, sturdy uh, roller hardware and slow close technology. Additional storage over here for clothes or pantry or whatever. Pull out full extension drawers, additional storage. Now, if you go to a longer RV, you may have more storage, but then it's harder to get into those cool campsites that you may wanna you know beachfront or whatever but this is nice this is all that most people would ever need there's additional storage in the drop down bed right here you have a little storage right here you have storage but you have your electrical tv center and your blu-ray disc player sourcing out to your tv so you can watch movies you've got three TVs in here nice big cabinets underneath with storage drawers a lot of people like this and you have an actual propane fired oven so if you do primitive camping the propane oven is a big deal me and my family we almost never use the oven but for some people they use it all the time but if, if you have a barbecue in one of your cargo compartments, you can plug it into the outside propane port in barbecue outside instead of using the propane inside. And I think that's more enjoyable. But hey, so people love their oven, although this one looks like nobody ever used it. Now, I did have a professional housekeeper come through and clean everything. So this has all been professionally cleaned. We've fixed everything we could find wrong with it, so it's ready to go. You can head for the campground, buy it tonight, camp in it tonight. It's ready to go. So I'm trying not to make my video too long, but I want to show you a few of the control features up here. It's only got about 120 hours on the generator total time, which these things will last 4,000, 5,000 hours. This is your inverter enable or disable switch. So if you're dry camping and you want your TVs and outlets to be functioning, you turn on the inverter. And it uses the battery power from the RV batteries to power the 110 volt outlets. Now it's not enough power to run hair dryers and high current use appliances, but for small things like charging phones and iPads and laptop computers and powering the TVs, it'll work just fine. Now it has an electric water heater source and a gas propane water heater heat source. Dual source water heating with a switch right here. You don't have to go outside and turn on the switch or play mystery games with it. It's all right here. If you're in a full hook hookup campground plugged into 110 volt power, you have electric water heat source and you can save your propane. You can turn that off and you'll still have hot water. But if it's a lot of you, you would want to use both so that you have quick recovery time on your water heater so a lot of people could take showers especially at a full hookup campground and you can also take nice long showers at a full hookup campground because you're not drawing from your onboard water supply it has tank heaters so 
So if you are going to be in conditions where it might get below freezing overnight, you would turn on your tank heater. It has a thermostat in it. It doesn't heat the tanks unless it gets close to freezing. And then it uses your 12 volt battery to provide heat to the uh, heating elements to warm up your plumbing underneath. Your slide out controls, you have two slide out controls for the bedroom, one by the bedroom and one over here. So you can close it from over here. And then of course, checking your fluid levels right here. Over in the bedroom, over here is your AC control, power outlets. And right now it knows we're on 30 amp power. You can turn the light on and you can scroll the water heaters. What this system is, if you, let's say you park in front of your house before you go on your trip and you want to plug it in, but you only have a 110 outlet like you might plug in a toaster in your kitchen. Um, you can use an adapter and plug it into that and you can, so you can change your source from a, a 30 amp to a 20 amp or or maybe even a 15 amp by selecting see there's 20 amp and there's 15 amp so if you're if you're plugged into a 15 amp power source then the water heater will be disconnected it doesn't have enough power to power that at the same time it's running it's turning off the 110 to the refrigerator the ac is still powered And it's using 14 amps, so it's using less than the 15 amps. This is a really smart technology. Most motorhomes don't have this, especially a short floor plan rig like this. this is really cool. So if we sc scroll over to 15 amp and we change it back to, yes, we're plugged into 30 amps, then it's using onboard math to allow all these different systems to work to make sure we don't overuse our amp power source right now it's only using 14 amps of the available 30 amps of power it was using 27 because the water heaters and everything were on together but for example if you go turn on a hair dryer it will shed some load so that you don't pop your circuit breaker this is gives you an enjoyable use of only 30 amp power plus when you go to campground 30 amp power sites are usually less expensive a few dollars less per night so this is the fan control for the fan over your bedroom, slide control and lights. And yes, you have power outlets scattered around in your bedroom. You have reading lights over the bed, blackout curtains. So if you like to sleep in, these are nice and thick so the light won't shine in to from sunlight if you don't want to wake up too early. Let's go out, look underneath, look on the roof. So we're going to have a look underneath the Jayco Alante. We have all new batteries, including the engine starting battery and the house batteries. Here's the tires. These tires are in great condition. It's low mileage. That's your springs, your engine, your radiators. It all looks almost like brand new. Just a little tiny bit of dust. It hasn't been driven in the snow or any kind of harsh conditions. All the tires are in great shape your hydraulic leveling jacks that's your catalytic converter right there it's not been messed with the muffler the exhaust and the differential in your drive shaft jayco says they balance the drive shafts for better results mud guards 80 gallon fuel tank your towing package with a seven pin connector for plug-in power to your trailer and then uh, here's your weight certificate sticker and then <clears throat> your propane tank is under there the other side of your fuel tank it's protected in the back there hydraulic leveling jacks again your six tires these are Goodyear RV rated tires smooth riding tires in uh, great condition haven't been ground off on curbs or anything like that it's super easy to drive this motorhome closer look at the exhaust and the engine look there's no leaks it's not leaking or seeping any kind of fluids it's sealed up tight as a drum and then your springs again 
So this is on the Ford F53 motorhome chassis with a big V10 engine in the front. It's got a very tight wheel cut angle so you can make U-turns in places you wouldn't think you'd be able to. Very tight turning radius. So as we go up on the roof, we're going to peek at the roof. We resealed the roof to make sure your seals are all secure so there's no chance for water to enter the coach. You've got a digital TV antenna, rooftop high performance air conditioning unit. That's the vent cover over the refrigerator roof vent and the weatherproof vent cover over the bathroom vent. A shower skylight. And you have an additional vent cover over the rest of the bedroom. Up on top we have a power awning. That's your power awning extending out. And it, just at the touch of a button, you can retract it back. The awning and all the awnings are in great condition. And they have some protection around them to protect them from the sun. And there we go, folding it back up the power awning. And another look at the roof. One more pass before we wrap up our video. That's your Max Air weatherproof vent cover. We put that on for you. It's got solar prep package. So if you want to add solar, it has wiring up on the roof for a solar prep package. And um, there's no problems with the roof radio antennas led lights everything looks good up here so as i'm wrapping up my video tour of this motorhome jaco alani 26x see if it's still available by going on my website this is the website here it's mybestcar.com if it is available and you're going to buy it you're going to pay your check to the owner of my company name a buyer's choice sometimes people put my videos in there for vehicle for sale listings and just so you know if you're paying to anyone other than a buyer's choice then you're probably not looking at this actual motorhome we're located in harupa valley california zip code 92509 and we've been here for 21 years my name is Mike Johnson. If you have questions, give me a call, 951-681-2101. Thank you for watching.